is I hope I'm on a punchline Africa. Um, the crisis going on in Nigeria as regards to Biafra. There is one thing I want my fellow Africans to understand. And it's the fact that socioeconomic development hinges on um, three elements, you know, which uh, structure, process, and interaction. Yeah, well, for a very long time, um, African leaders and most of uh, our elites have neglected this. So within the context of uh, the Nigerian, Nigeria as a country, and then Biafra as a nation that existed several years, thousands of years before uh, the arrival of the European colonialists. Uh, what they don't understand is that for an economy, for a nation to develop, the society have to be free, have to be fair and equitable. So these are the bedrock of every nation. But in the case of Nigeria, these three elements that makes up a vibrant society has actually been relegated to the background. You know, the concern has been how to share the oil rent, how to share the resources. But two key things, if Nigeria must move on as a nation, they have to understand is one, the population explosion which has been imminent and two, the decline in productivity. You know, uh, recent statistics shows that uh, Nigerian population has been growing at the rate of 2.58% annually, while the economy has only been growing just on minus, you know, it's just coming back to life, about 0.25%. So with this surge in population growth, with this explosion in population rate, imagine what will happen in the next 25 years. So uh, demographers have already estimated that the population of Nigeria is going to grow. That yeah, the issue of Biafran agitation is only being seen as a means of dividing Nigeria by the elites who have been benefiting consistently since the inception of Nigeria as a country since independence in 1960. Uh, the fact remains that Niger the unity of Nigeria, which uh, most of our political leaders have come out and made it known that is non-negotiable, that is not right. Because in the first place, the only attempt made on negotiating the existence of Nigeria was the 1963 constitution, uh, which was um, an amendment, uh, you know, an improvement on the earlier constitutions, the uh, Richardson constitution, the Clifford constitution, the Marfexson constitution, and the, uh, the London Constitutional Conference that provided the framework of a post-colonial Nigeria, you know. So the instrument, the only democrat, uh, democratic instrument that uh, we could say is uh, an instrument that would have served as a framework for a modern Nigeria was the 1963 constitution, but that was toppled uh, by the military in 1966. So subsequently, every other constitution has been a concussion. You know, they concocted it. Uh, four, five, six generals sat down together and said, we the people. And it, it doesn't reflect that. The Constitution of America, there were duly elected representatives of the people that converged uh, you know, at Washington, D.C. 
and they sat down for ye, you know, months, days, writing the constitution and making adjustments, reflecting what the constituents, people that elected them, have already discussed. They didn't just sit down and write it from the blues. There was a representation. But in the case of the present 1999 constitution, there was no representation of the people. It was General Abdul Salam Abubakar and some other member of the Armed Forces Ruling Council that sat down and Provisional Ruling Council, as it was called, you know, where the people that sat down and came up with this constitution. Of, of course, it was just a, a mere amendment, you know, from previous military constitutions, uh, which is automatically uh, uh, by fiat of the decrees. So the agitation for Biafra is a legitimate agitation. It is not just a Nandekano, they didn't just, you know, came out of the blues and started asking for Biafra. Um, yeah, most of the instrument, most of the documents have been privileged to, 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 to have access to. I found out exactly what happened in the 60s and the motives behind them. But one thing Nigeria should understand that the present structure is only postponing uh, the doomsday because we are not thinking about how to develop uh, our regions from the grassroots because development is an organic process. It is a kind of an upward spiral mechanism whereby you build your access from you know your resources your capabilities from the bottom upwards you know from the community to the state and then to the region and the federation and by the way what what is the essence of having a federal government a federal government is a system of government which allows the regions the constituents the units that are federating, you know, it's, it's, it's a union of constitutions when you look at it from a democratic angle. But from an economic point of view, a federation is supposed to be a physical structure way that allows states to generate their own resources, manage their own resources, will be able to uh, solve their development problem through innovation, ideas. That's what drives economies and that's what drives nations. That is what drives development. So the essence of it is to allow Biafra they are talking about is not about war. This is about allowing individuals, the people to go and vote. If what they want is Biafra, they vote for it. Those that actually want a restructured Nigeria can equally vote. And those that want the animal kind, animal farm kind of Nigeria, they could also vote for that. But I don't think that anybody agitating or asking for a referendum is committing tracing or inciting violence. No, Nigeria has never been won. We don't have a unity. There is no unity in Nigeria. Ask a Northern I will tell you I'm full and forced. Ask an Eastern I will tell you I'm evil forced. So we have to recognize these cultural identity differences we have. You know, you can't just force unity on people. 